Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hello, I'm... Insert your name. And you're listening to... Insert name of show. And now I'd just like to say... Insert funny ad-libbed comment. Well, welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation. Next generation radio for otaku. <laughs> Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. We were going to do the whole opening in Pikachu, but then we realized no one would understand us except Tim and Jefferson. We're still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where Jefferson is a Pokemon trainer. Show number 727, May 15th, 2019, with this week's topic, My Hero Academia, Two Heroes Movie. And now, Reasons Marshmallow Peeps Are Not Pokemon. Number one, not resistant to microwaves. Number two, they do not go peep peep. Number three, Easter eggs make poor Pokeballs. Number four, sugar Pokemon are subject to trainer predation. And number five, chocolate bunnies punch above their weight. And now, someone who won't massage your feet, even if your head's going to explode, Alan Chase. Yeah, that's true. That's true even if you're side duck. <laughs> so, uh, hi, hello everyone. I I am Alan. I am Matt. Bryce. And uh, Paul, we don't even have him on Skype. He's, uh, he's out this week. Paul so. is very involved in important things. What's Freesh? What's Frank? What's Squeak with the UG crew? Indeed. Um, so what did I do this week? Uh, okay, so I saw Detective Pikachu. Good movie. Uh, fun uh, I'm sure that's going to be a conversation piece with, with Matt as well. Uh, so we'll get to that in a moment. Um, what else did I do? No, hmm, not, not a whole lot. I got a new camera uh, for <laughs> some, you know, for other purposes. But uh, so if the, call, the pictures look better, uh, it's largely due to that. Um, however, I'm using mm-hmm. my old lens. With the new camera body, even though it's a completely different brand, I bought an adapter. Um, and Does it uh, work okay? Oh, yeah, it works great. Uh-huh. Um, I, though, they essentially make a newer version of that lens for this, uh, you know, for this camera body. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will, and the price is right. It's not too expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and it. It's essentially slightly more, and so instead of it being 17 millimeter to 50 millimeter, they offer it in up to 70 millimeter. So I will be getting that uh, soon, probably not most immediately, maybe sometime in June, but uh, for now I'm going to use the lens conversion for the moment. Um, so yeah, no, it, it uh, I like it. Uh, it's taken me a moment to get used to it, but I have other things I need to get because I really intend to use this camera less for photography and more for videography stuff so it just blows my mind that with like modern digital cameras you have a choice of using it for photography or videography Mm -hmm. that that just is amazing to me you know with that uh really i like it given you know this is like a budget solution for me Mm. um surprisingly the same cost for this camera body is what it cost me roughly to buy this this old camera this old canon camera that i have here yeah um and which was not even a high end for its time Uh, you know it uh... served me pretty well but when filming with it it you know it's old and it uh, a lot of the improvements they made after this model um are almost immediately seen in the next generation and the next next generation and i'm finally at this point where i need something that will do 4k and has a higher quality sensor and does a bunch of the modern things mm-hmm. um, to make it a little bit easier. So um, ironically, I bought a lot of batteries and I bought a lot of tools and accessories and things for these older cameras. And I might not need them when I do some filming somewhere in the, you know, in the summertime. So uh, well, we'll see. Uh, I, I think it's just really cool that with like the march of technology, 
you can still, you know, upgrade your equipment for the same price point, and it's so much nicer mm -hmm. than like previous generations of stuff. Well, you gotta re remember, I bought that uh, the Canon camera body that mm. I'm pointing at that no one can see it except for the three of you. Um, <laughs> I think I bought it in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, and this I bought, you know, now, so nine years later, it's a significant, huge yeah. change. Yeah. But, but still, it's nine years is, is not a long time in like, you know, the grand scope of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like every time I have to upgrade my computer, I'm, I'm just like really impressed with how much more powerful, mm -hmm. you know, the same amount of money will get a computer like how much more computer the same amount of money will get me like x number of years down the road right yeah sure my father was complaining um i don't know maybe ne last weekend maybe even early maybe it was this week mm -hmm. he had some computer problems and he had just recently like backed up literally the night before uh -huh. and he's like oh i got a problem my computer uh, and it's like how old the, is the thing he's like I don't know, I think it's only a couple years old. And I said, no, I'm, it's got to be at least five years old. <laughs> then when he talked to me yesterday, last night, it, it turns out he bought the thing in 2011. So, that's, so it's, it's 10 years old, which is five generations of personal yeah. computers. And I had to remind him that, you know, when three years go by, in computer world, that's like thirty years. Uh -huh. like it's it's like a ten times it's a ten times factor. So um, you know it's a significant huge gap, and that he you know he was wanting to complain that he has to go spend some money on a computer, and I'm like, oh my Meaning god, he has to spend any money and any attention yeah. on the computer. And I'm just like, sorry, dad, this is just not how it works. They don't make TVs to last like they used to you know those zenith you know tvs were pieces of furniture it's just not what they do anymore and the same thing goes for the computers and the same thing goes for the cameras and stuff like that you know it rapidly improves and um yes. so you know i uh, i spent some money to buy a converter uh, adapter and it turns out that's good i spent i think about six hundred dollars for that lens and that wasn't even a super expensive lens that lens now goes for a lot less. Um, yeah, so I'm happy for that part, that the cost of entry is different and the cost of the entry for the accessories is a lot less. But anyhow, so to kit that thing you know, up and uh, to get it where I need it you know, in the next couple of months, it's going to take some money to do that. But um, I'm, I'm just like hung up on your metaphor for furniture uh, versus electronics. And all I can think is like, you know, Ethan Allen going, now get the seventh generation chair version 2.73 yeah i mean like i remember my grandmother Your chair bug fix she bought <laughs> she would buy like zenith and i know it wasn't just zenith quasar whatever they used to literally make entertainment centers the whole entertainment center was the stereo and it was a piece of furniture that you weren't willing to move and that's also part of why it costs so much and so what what happened? You know, in the mm -hmm. 80s, it wasn't uncommon for you to go into a grandparent's house and see them put their new TV on top of their old, old TV, TV furniture yeah. <laughs> where you can still see it's a TV. Um, it didn't have the doors closed or anything. You could at least put a tablecloth over it or something to, like, pretty it up, you yeah. know. <laughs> and, then, and then when you, you know, and then the worst case... And I had seen them where I've seen people had their TV furniture yeah. with their new TV on top of it with a smaller TV on top of that TV. And uh. I was like, oh, my God, people just get rid of stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyhow. <laughs> Hi. Hello, everyone. There's a random tangent for today's show. Um, yeah. So I bought a new camera. So um, spent some money, finally pulled the trigger on it. And um, I'm happy. Pictures will be better. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that's kind of nice is I literally can go over to my smartphone and put the camera in a mode and say, okay, send these things over to my smartphone. You know, so when you see a lot of people say like, you know, they Instagram great stuff on their iPhone. No, they didn't do it on their iPhone. They took their $7,000 rigged out DLSR and transfer the picture over to, and then they, they put that up in Instagram. Oh my God, how insincere. Uh, yeah, exactly. But it's I'm, neat. I'm appalled. But it's neat. I don't even need to pop out the SD card. I can just transfer the photos over, you know, wirelessly. So that's nice. 
Um, yeah, so anyhow, so that is kind of what's new with me, tech, and I'm going to put that to good use, and I'm going to be adding more hardware onto that thing and probably making this ugly-looking rig for it that is going to be, you know, what I need. Mm-hmm. And I'll be carrying that, you know, thing around a lot. But, um, yeah, so I don't know. So happy, um, spent money, uh, nothing of any kind of nerd essential, you know, <laughs> sake related to anime uh, or TV. Um, so we saw a movie. Yeah. Uh, yesterday we both went out and we saw the Detective Pikachu live action movie at our local Megaplex. Mm-hmm. Um, actually got some free Pokemon cards. Yeah, we were going to open that up. Was it opening weekend this weekend? I See, I didn't think it was, mm-hmm. but I believe it is. It is. It is. Oh. And so for some reason I thought it was open last weekend. Yeah, I did too, which yeah. was actually why I was you know, interested in going to see it this weekend because I was like, oh, good, it's already been out for a week already. This mm-hmm. way we won't have, like, you know, tons of, like, screaming kid Pokemon right. fans, you know. And we, we there were definitely a lot of kids that uh, we saw on the way out. I saw lots of mm-hmm. parents holding, you know, clusters of kids in their Oh, you know, so they hands. caught the, uh, the late afternoon mm-hmm. slash early evening showing. Yeah, this was, we went to a 710. And mm-hmm. surprisingly, it was not that packed, even though when we were picking our seats, mm-hmm. the, it would look like, you know, the place was packed. Yeah. And um, that just wasn't well, the, the case nice, for some reason. The nice thing is that uh, when you have, uh, like, these these big megaplexes and digital uh, projection technology, it, you're not limited by the, the physical 35 millimeter print that mm-hmm. you've got. I I guess you can like unlock it to like display it on multiple theaters, you know, just so long as you like keep you know accounting for the tickets properly and sending the uh, the distributor their cut. Um, so the cool thing is when you have a big blockbuster, you can run it on multiple screens at one time, so mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about you know all your show you're like your one show in prime time f- you know selling out and having to turn away people, which is like you know bad customer you know, service. Yeah. So you have multiple, multiple showings all starting within like, you know, every half hour or something like that. And that way, you know, you can accommodate everybody's schedule and still get the maximum amount of, uh, of tickets to be, to be sold. Yeah. Um, I, we saw like standard, we didn't see anything special, but I don't mm-hmm. know if it was digital projection or not. No idea. I'm pretty sure that like everything they do there is digital projection now. No. Yeah. I mean, Maybe the IMAX is like a, just a physical projection, mm-hmm. but uh, but I'm sure that everything else is is digital for the standard yeah. showings. I know in cases like that, what they would do is they ship. Um, they were shipping hard drives in the past, but they're, I'm sure they're just shipping like SSD mags. Mm. You know now, probably that yeah. would be cool. Yeah. So how was the movie? <laughs> uh, it was good. Oh yeah, it uh, it had Pikachu in it. Um. <laughs> so um, it, it's good. There is something to spoil. Um, there's def- definitely stuff in the trailer that definitely spoils things, but I don't want to go down that route. Well, did you did you understand them to be spoilers when you saw the trailer, or was it only nope. after you saw the movie that you realized in retrospect they were tr- they were spoilers? The latter. Okay. Um, right. and, um, well, then they weren't really spoilers, were they? Right, but you know, so so point being is that um, it, it's it's definitely a good movie, and I will. I'm sure it's pretty pretty legit to say that this has probably been the best adaptation of a video game movie to date. Yeah, yeah. Um, I gen- believe that. <laughs> um, and you yeah. know, obviously, the Sonic movie is not gonna. Uh, you know, not going to <laughs> exceed this at well, all. Well, they're they're going for a more cartoony approach for yeah. the Sonic movie. Um, Jim Carrey is is the villain, and he's just yeah, yeah, yeah. way over the top, which is I think the the style they're going for in this. This was it's it feels very much like a Pokemon style world. It doesn't feel like they're trying to jam Pokemon photorealistic Pokemon into the real world. It's it's sort of like this nice nether thing where they're they're keeping the feel of the Pokemon world where yeah you've got Pokemon running around all over the place and but they're not 
It doesn't feel absurd. But they're not they're not doing that thing that a lot of cartoon adaptation movies do where they try and sort of make fun of the whole premise of cartoon characters in the mm-hmm. real world. Right. Yeah. And uh No, I think I think if you have any kind of a semblance of Pokemon the game in general, you can absolutely have fun with this movie. They are having mm-hmm. fun with Pokemon. Yes. They're having fun with the characters. They make uh, enough character references. Yeah. Um, I would also say that um, you don't necessarily need... I think it, it certainly helps for you to have some context to, to Pokemon in general. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you'll enjoy um, it much more if you have more context of, of like Pokemon and mm-hmm. the Pokemon world and continuity and everything. Um, but it's not absurd. They don't go out of the way to, to, to force a concept across. They mm-hmm. just have the concept and then they play with it. Yeah, and, and the characterization sort of uh, flies along the same route as the regular Pokemon series. It's like people are straightforwardly who they are. Um, everyone is... There's no, like, cynicism and, like, jaded commentary among the characters. Like, there's a girl who's, like, the cub reporter who wants the big story. And that's, you know, that's That's basically... That's who she is. She wants... She is a cub reporter, and her goals and motivation are, I want to get the big story. That's the big deal. The protagonist's um, motivation is just that, you know, his, his father has been in an accident and been declared dead, and he's just coming to town... Um, where all the Pokemon are to wrap up his father's affairs. And that's, you know, basically what he's there for. And he has some other character development along the way, and then he meets Pikachu. Mm-hmm. Um, but the nice thing is that they're 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 not doing these things like where the, the Cat in the Hat movie from Dr. Seuss, they did a live-action version, and they, they just felt they were trying to shovel in a whole lot of stuff into the movie, that really was not organic to the Cat in the Hat universe, right? I, I, like when so when you see a, adaptations like that, I, I can see it's a we're reigniting this so that we can have our merchandise potential back for the next five years. Yeah, it's, and it's kind of sad is, how nakedly opportunistic it is. Right, and this is just not the case here. Mm-hmm. Well, I did have some kind of urge to say, you know, maybe we should install Pokemon Go again. I wonder if they're going to go to the Switch. <laughs> like, and then I'm like, wait, 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 Ellen, stop. Nope. No, no, you're not going to do any of that. Um, you know, while I had that thought in my mm-hmm. head and I, you know, I forestopped myself, I'm sure someone's going to feel encouraged. You know, like with Harry Potter... You know, everyone, everyone who was privileged wanted owls as pets and they got them. Well, you know, yeah, that's I feel very bad. bad for the owls. Right. I feel bad for the parents uh-huh. who are going to have to explain that Pokemon are not legitimately real and that they can't have their favorite Pokemon yeah. as a pet um, or as a partner mm-hmm. um, as being, you know, stemmed here. Yeah. Um, so, no, totally good movie. Um, I uh, I think it's probably one of the best adaptations mm-hmm. of this sake. Um, I jokingly said to somebody, uh, "Well, uh, you know, probably not going to be a second one of these movies." Um, and I was told there's a sequel coming. So. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah. And so, just to be totally clear, I'm not down on merchandising um, entertainment properties. I enjoy merch as much as the next person, but it's just really sad when someone makes a movie and it's just a lousy movie and you're just like, the entire motivation of this was, this is popular, make a movie of it right? to inspire more merchandise buying. We come from the generation, I think at least, very, at least all three of us, that we're not surprised that mm. they're terrible movies. When they come from a franchise that has yeah. a very loose, um, a loose thesis about like its plot or its structure or yeah. why the video game well, I mean, that's, is, uh... is interesting despite its popularity. Here, it's not that it's surprising; it's that they did a very good treatment with it. Um, but it's also like I don't think Nintendo needs any help to, <laughs> to sell Pokemon, um, and certainly they didn't make sure that they made an opportunistic effort to mm-hmm. make this movie into that. More of that, yeah. yeah. It's it's sort of like um, th- like you remember the first Lego movie 
that was a really good movie, and right. it just happened to be done with Legos. Right, yeah. And the great thing was, it was a good movie, period, and it was about Legos. And the nice thing is, it actually managed to tie Legos into mm-hmm. the plot and the characterization of the, the father and the son, and they did a really good job with it on mm-hmm. all on all counts, which yep. was just amazing to me because usually I, I see Lego movies as just like, oh, it's Lego Star Wars or it's right, you know, Lego this or Lego that. And it's like, okay, yeah, Lego Batman was, was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but usually the other ones just feel like we're doing – I don't know Star Wars Lego or whatever the or Lord when, of the Rings Lego is a movie right. because it's a merchandising opportunity. Yeah, and it's a tie-in. They had fun with it, and that was good. Yeah, and um, they didn't take anything too seriously, and mm-hmm. I think they did a really good job. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I would say go see it in the theater. Um, I would say you don't need to see it in 3D. You don't need to see it in super large IMAX. Um, you know, Pikachu is adorable and everything, but you don't need to see him in 3D and IMAX. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, totally, totally go see it. Okay. Um, that's that's my recommendation. Also, you get a, a set of two Pokemon <laughs> collector cards. Yeah. Or at least we did. Right. We Because it was opening weekend. Is it opening weekend? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, you want to you wanna open these yeah. up, Bryce, and, and tell us if they gave us any good cards? Yeah, so yeah. mine are sealed. I'm going to put it on my shelf, and then Matt's <laughs> like... three dollars in 10 sac- years. <laughs> sacrifice, <laughs> sacrifice his. All for you listeners. Um, and for me. And so <laughs> Bryce had said that he looked up that apparently there's they only give you two out of three. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, you're not always necessarily going to get the same ones. Oh, so, so I got, um, oh, there's more than three then, because I didn't see Jigglypuff on the list. So yeah, I got a Jigglypuff and a Detective Pikachu. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. He has a move called Coffee Break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to add. Heal oh, 30 damage from the Pokemon. <laughs> that, is a, that is a good joke that's in the uh, movie. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take pictures of that eventually. Um, yeah, okay, so cool. That that was it. That was sort of maybe the only relevant thing that I did, and I, you know, achieved that last night. Yeah. Um, Glad it came out well. I was very skeptical. A lot of people were probably very skeptical when they first announced this project. So. Um, and so anyone who was going to tell you that the Sonic movie is amazing, it is better than, you know, first thing, we got months to go for that. Um, but also, mm. also, they're probably lying. I can't imagine that movie is going to be good. Not a single part of it. <laughs> it it mm. can't compare. What you you don't think that uh, that the recent controversy about Sonic's character design being like revamped after the trailer came out is is going to make sign? it a better movie? It's a good sign that they're revamping it so that it well, doesn't it make means that a, they're a they're interest, they're interested Sonic. in making a good movie and they're they were like okay we're going to since this is a live action movie we're going to revamp Sonic's character design to make him more you know, realistically proportioned. No, this movie... With, and then there were people were like, no, we don't like Sonic that way. We like Sonic to be cartoonishly proportioned. Right. That's that's who Sonic is. And then they were like, oh, well, people feel strongly about this. We, we should, you know, change course to accommodate that. I think that's a fantastic idea. I, I, I am happy that they are listening and that mm-hmm. they're going to spend the next six months in the process figuring out how to do that. Um, my thing about it is I don't think the world ever needed a Sonic live action movie. And more importantly, I think it, this is more of the thing we were talking about, which is a way to renew some merchandising opportunities. Um, I don't Mm. think there's anything that delivers, it's going to add any value. Um, I think self-contained wise, and maybe I'll be completely wrong. I don't think it's going to be as good of a movie. Uh, comparatively, and now I'm saying that without ever seeing it. But the trailer alone—you well, don't it need looks, to watch movies to have opinions on them. Um, it looks pretty bad. 
I mean, uh, I just kind of think Sonic's lame in general. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> so I, yeah, you already are really coming up an uphill battle with me to try to get me to want to watch this movie. Right? Yeah. No, I I think that the Sonic movie looks lame despite bad character design. I heard someone say the Sonic design looks like a bootleg Sonic, which I think is a really good way to describe it. I forget who said that, but that was a really good like you know, it looks like yeah. someone took like a bootleg Sonic the Hedgehog and tried to sell it like you know on the streets as yeah. opposed to official merchandise. It just, you know, and then they threw Jim Carrey in there, and the fact that he even said yes to it, it just seems like... What has he been doing? Where has he been? I don't even know. I lost um, he's, him in the... he's been painting. Okay. Well. Um, and if you go check his Twitter, you can see his, his paintings are mostly lately been political, given, you know, what's going on in, in the U.S. right now. But um, his... Uh, yeah, his paintings are really good. They're surrealistic, but right. um, he's just sort of... I was wondering why they were like, of... we've got to get Jim Carrey in here no. <laughs> play Dr. Robotic. It has to be him. I don't know. Maybe he's just a Sonic fan or something, and he's like, ooh, true. Sonic movie. I want to be in it. Yeah, maybe. I don't <laughs> know. Actors like stuff, too, you know. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that connection is, if there is a legitimate, real connection there. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, weird. That's all. That's all mm. I'm saying, and I don't... I won't be surprised if it turns out that it is a really bad movie. Okay. Even with character redesign. Um, I think that's more of what I was saying because I don't think, I don't know. I don't know what the, what the intent was there. Uh-huh. Uh, it turns out, at least in the Pikachu movie, it isn't that kind of let's make a lot more money. Um, I think it was more of let's have fun with this idea. And they did. They did a, a relevant, good way of having fun with this this uh, Detective Pikachu. So I'm curious what the sequel will be like, but I don't know. We won't know for a while. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so that was it. That's that's plenty for me. Anything else with you, Matt? Uh, let's see. I forget if I mentioned this, what with, like, you know, the season um, impression shows going on, um, but I did go out and see the Shazam movie a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that yet. Um, overall, I'd say it was fun. Uh, it was, you know, okay, not great. Um, but one thing that, that I noticed watching the movie was that they they definitely had, like, uh, a little bit of what I would call tone whiplash, where the the basic story is that, you know, emo young teenage orphan Billy Batson is a perpetual runaway and is looking for his, like, birth mother, and it's all, like, grim and, and you know, dramatic and emo and everything. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as he turns into Shazam... All of a sudden, he's a happy-go-lucky, carefree teen in a grown-up's body, mm. and it's it's kind of a kind of a dissonance for me because, like five minutes ago, he was sitting around being all jaded and cynical, and like I'm an orphan, woe is me, and then blam, he gets turned into a superhero, and he's like, ooh, let's let's go out and uh, and fight crime and see if we can buy beer. Uh, I got him. Um, so the one real major question I have is, was there any, and I don't know the comic, I don't really know the material, mm-hmm. um, this was all sort of a surprise to me when I heard about it, Yeah. Um, was there any relevance from the original material, if anyone knows, uh, even, you know, anyone listening, um, or, like, why Philadelphia is really kind of my question. It was the same Philadelphia, I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was. It was set in Philadelphia, the big city we live near, too. Yeah, so I, that's a big old question for mark for me is like is the original comic based on that? i have no idea or actually if that it's just based con- in philadelphia or whether they were just like convenient nobody else has used option. philadelphia we should go there right because i know when they do off cities like that yeah some cities have um they have programs where they make it really cheap for big movie studios to come in and film in their town. Well, they yeah. It, all they make it easy to provision and get licenses. Movie making is all about yeah. saving money. So mm-hmm. if you have a, a local film board or, or film, I don't know, commission. promotion. Fil- yeah, film promotion commission. And they're like, hey, we've got a special this year on shooting movies in mm-hmm. Philadelphia. People are like... I'll save that money. <laughs> right. I mean, all those, all cities want this kind of stuff. I mean, Atlanta is going through this process right now. Yeah. They made it very inexpensive and easy for Marvel people. Marvel shot a lot of their right. their movies. Yep. In, in... Uh, Vancouver has been benefiting from this for like nearly 30 years. That's why mm-hmm. a, a lot of uh, major studios, 
film quite a bit in, in Vancouver because it, it has sets in the eclectic, uh, different styles of architecture yeah. and culture. It has good geography, it. good architecture. Mm -hmm. It has a film break, I guess. And yeah. the exchange rate is beneficial for working in Canada. So Yeah, so my point was I didn't know if it was kind of related to that I guess kind I'm, of thing. I what I'm reading in the comic when they rebooted the DC Universe was mm -hmm. New 52, which I'm just reading. I don't know much about that. Uh, apparently it was rebooted. He it was a fifth Billy Bast Baston, fifteen year old child, uh, foster child living in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. So uh -huh. I guess it was. Okay. Yeah. So, so it so does tie into the recent comics. This happened back in twenty twelve, apparently. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So cool. a newer thing. I that's, don't know. He's an old character. He's been around forever, I guess. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like in, most DC heroes. <laughs> in in fact, Shazam's original name was Captain Marvel, right, and it was one of those things that that Marvel comics and DC like would like you know have lawsuits with each other years in the past about. Who got the name Marvel? And Marvel yeah. was like, "Yeah, well, our whole company's name is Marvel. It makes sense for us to have it." And yeah, they were like, "Well, we don't care. We came up with this thing." And and, and da, 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 so da, 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 there's da. some interesting Just things back there and forth, back and forth between with like you know Supergirl and Kara Danvers and mm. Carol. Danvers, there's lots of oh little, my god, I never realized little that. petty things all over attached every which way. Anyhow, so I, know, I lost my frame of mind. So anyway, I saw Shazam, and while it wasn't a great movie, it was a good movie. Yeah. And I definitely, you know, say, you know, if you're interested in in superhero stuff, go take a look at it. Sure, it's uh, it's it's not a bad movie. I'm likely to go rent it at some point because um, I generally like Zachary Levi in things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he played Chuck. He plays the grown up Shazam. Right. Um, and so as an actor, you know, I'm generally interested when he does stuff. So that's that's cool. Um, and then also Philadelphia, you mm -hmm. know, how many times do you see a major movie being done in Philadelphia? It's a blockbuster. Uh, oh, yeah. Here's here's a great one. Um, when Ca uh, Captain America Civil War came out, there's a scene in it where Tony Stark is recruiting Spider-Man mm -hmm. to join his side of the Civil War. Yeah. And... When I saw it, and this is just in Philadelphia, when, when the title card for Queens came up, everybody cheered, and I saw something on the internet where someone who actually is in Queens mm -hmm. what, was watching the movie on opening weekend, and when the title card came up, he said it was deafening how much the, the Queens audience cheered when that came up. Oh, And it's like, yeah. yay, we were mentioned in a movie. Woohoo! Right, yeah. So, um, anyhow, so I, I will likely see it at some point, but uh, I'm, you know, I'm in no rush for it. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to kill that <laughs> <laughs> completely. Um, uh, let's see. What else have I been doing lately? Uh, been watching more Steven Universe, been, uh, been watching Star versus the Forces of Evil, and I am pre ordering the Venture Brothers new season when it finally comes out on home video. Oh, cool. So, that's hmm. that's a thing. Okay, Bryce, what's been going on, dude? Uh, I've been reading actually some manga. It's a, and watching a well. I'll start with the anime. I've been watching more of Kaguya Sama Love Is War. Mm -hmm. This is from two seasons ago, I think. This is the one where there's like the president of the student council and the girl who's like vice president. They're super like they're most popular people in school, and they're trying to get the other one to, I guess confess their love to them as opposed to being the one that has to confess their love because then that puts you in like uh, a, love is war you put you in a state where you're not it's, you're not you know oh i guess God. the winning member of the couple so it's kind of it's pretty funny though and i think the reason why i think it's so funny is actually there's a care what's her name um there's this the treasurer the pink hair girl like at first i thought it was gonna be really annoying mm-hmm because um, she's like kind of like this ditzy girl, pink hair, always happy. Yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> she's like the best part of the show, and I think at least so far in the first five episodes, like she just adds a lot of good chaos to the mix between these two, like you know, very you know, upper upbeat, snobby kind of people trying out the two very main characters. Very formal, here. very correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so she's pretty good. There's one, and they they for one of the endings for like episode three, it's just her like. It's usually it's the endings normally like this weird like sort of weird story where they put them in like a fancy world where they're the girls like riding on this blimp. It kind of looks like something from a Miyazaki movie, maybe like Castle in the Sky. They kind of <laughs> put them in like this scene with nothing to do with the show. Uh huh. Uh, but for the third episode or fourth, they like the, this girl Chika Fujiwara. She like is just lying on the desk and just gets up and starts doing like this sweet ass like dance. <laughs> 
It's like really well animated. It's very impressive. Um, Yay! Hooray for good animation. Yeah. Uh, but it's well animated across the board. Um, I think it's fun. They usually do three or four like sort of little mini episodes within one episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's it, it's it's obviously coming from like either a weekly or maybe even a, a small like a shorter uh, source material, which I think mm-hmm. works well uh, for it for sure. And yeah, I know Paul says there's some characters that are introduced. There's there, there a character, at least one character introduced later on. He's not a big fan of because he's like kind of like an anime pervert. <laughs> but, uh, but um, so far the main three characters are great. Okay. Uh, yeah, well animated. I check it out uh, for sure. Uh, uh, Love is War. Yes, Kaguya-sama. Love is War. It's on Crunchyroll. Uh, Excellent. And other places, I think too. Uh, I've not checked out the manga or anything like that. Uh, I know it's based off one. Uh, for manga, I but last week I mentioned Hell Warrior Higuma. I was kind of enjoying it. Well, it turns out it's ending <laughs> after 20 after like i don't know 18 episodes or chapters Aww. so that's too bad um you know it was, makes me wonder like how they gauge success in like a weekly jump you know when at one point is like oh this isn't popular enough we're cutting it like i'm just wondering where they even get that data from or how they even figure it out uh, well i know that when i was getting shonen jumps uh like imported mm-hmm. um there were you know things like uh reader response cards in okay. them and uh, it, yeah. in japanese manga and they they basically pay attention to that it's like I I if if you don't care enough about this to mark it down as a favorite on the reader response card then we're not going to spend money on it anymore yeah i guess so or waste i, guess, I, I imagine it's even more of like a wasting page space because you know most popular well, yeah there's there's a million manga artists trying to get their their stuff into the weeklies and uh, especially the big Jump, weeklies yeah, the <laughs> and uh and if if a, if you get a bad response or even just a lukewarm response, they're going to say, that's not really what we're shooting for. We want sh- yeah. we want to shoot for stuff that lots of people are going to love. It's just like one of those things where I look at like Shonen series, like they, they're best when they're given some time to develop. And it just feels mm-hmm. like it's hard to like, you don't want to, you know, start the show with a showstopper in the first you know few chapters. You want to build up to something big, but mm-hmm. you have to be popular enough to get there. It's yeah. very, it's, I mean, it's a very difficult difficult thing <laughs> yeah that's that's why you have like power escalation is you like start off at yeah. one level and then to keep going but make it more high higher yeah. stakes but to get to that point based on popularity you have mm-hmm. to maybe want to like hook people in and i guess i don't know yeah not that i love it's, this series i'm not like heartbroken i won't get to see more of it but it still is interesting but it's too bad yeah. it was good yeah, yeah i thought it was decent yeah had, had potential for sure mm-hmm. um also reading neolation which is the hacker one also in Jump, has not been canceled to my knowledge. Mm-hmm. And um, that's still pretty good. They sure gave his backstory, Neo, the main character. Um, I won't talk much about it. I've talked about it before. It's just, he's a hacker that sort of is trying to take down criminals mm-hmm. through his hacking skills. <laughs> and they finally gave his backstory, which was, was nice. Um, and then I was also reading um, Golden Kamui, which is, this is an anime that came out, I think, last summer. Uh-huh. This is the manga it's based off of. It's um, a story about, it's like the post-Russia... Japanese war, uh-huh. a soldier from it who was like known for being invincible, like he just survived really bloody battles, is sort of his friend or his, co- or his friend in, in arms like died. On it. Well, his mm. last request was like, please take care of my wife who's pregnant with my child. But yeah, so he needs to get gold. So the premise of this series is that uh, he's told a story by a drunk guy who um, didn't mean to tell him actually when it was all said and done that this, this one I criminal, should not have said that. This I one should criminal, not have said that. Yeah. <laughs> stockpiled all this gold and hid it somewhere there's one criminal mm-hmm. and when he was in prison he like tattooed a code on like all these other prisoners backs where the to tell you where the gold is aha uh-huh. and while the prisoners are being when these prisoners are being um transported they got out and it's got kind of scattered <laughs> so the main character hears this story and he's like i want to get this gold i'm gonna start hunting these guys down <laughs> it turns out the drunken guy actually was one of them <laughs> so that's how he knew the story was real this is all first <laughs> chapter stuff yeah uh, and then he teams up, well, he ends up through happenstance, but he almost gets killed by a bear, <laughs> that he's teaming up with uh, this girl, I forget what tribe she's from, but she's also very cool. Uh, so she's like, kind of be like, the person's going to give him the information about how to survive in the wild, but she's also very capable as a um, character as well. Let's see a second. The Anu, Anu squad, or a clan, I guess, or tribe. So she is, sort of lives in the forest, and, you know, is a little more, I guess well versed in how to survive there yeah and she doesn't like take care of a bear etc and so they're gonna team up because she wants the gold too because or she wants the um what happened was that the people that were i guess the people that were killed were from her tribe when the prisoners escaped so i think she wants to get the gold because once they find the gold and it's been found uh-huh. they're gonna probably execute the guy who ah. hit everybody because they don't need him anymore not the, the bad guy <laughs> the guy who did the tattooing so i think she wants that for revenge i was a little unclear about that right away uh, but anyway they're gonna team up and do it and that's sort of where i'm at right now um i watch more in the anime so i 
I'm not quite where I was in the anime. I was only like five or six episodes, but I'm willing to read this. Uh, it's on the jump service. Uh, this added recently. I'm glad they did. Uh, it's it's age gated for a reason. <laughs> like I'm not saying it's like totally gory, but like you know, hey, this bear. But malt. it's it's not yeah. for children. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, this is like a, this is a step above like a One Piece or a Naruto, etc. Okay. So I check it out if you're into that type of thing. Uh, this sounds interesting to you. I've heard nothing but good things, so I definitely want to read it. Uh, there's plenty of it out now. So the only thing I want to talk about was the uh, this, this this new manga called Samurai Eight, uh, which is this is written by the Naruto uh, author. Oh, okay. And 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 um, drawn by I believe one of his assistants who was working with him for a while on Naruto. So oh, yeah. Follow up, and it's cool so far. It's just one chapter. Uh, it's called Samurai, Samurai 8, The Tale of Hachimaru, and mm-hmm. it's about it's a sci-fi series, but, like, not sci-fi in the way Eden Zero is, like, sort of sci-fi with spaceships and stuff. It's more like sci-fi, like, like think of Tenchi and the Jirai Empire, and they're, like, wood-based technology and stuff like that. Oh, It, okay. it resembles that, kind of. It's more mystical, like, <laughs> it's a mystical sci-fi. It's sort not, of vintage sci-fi. You know, they're not, like, putting on hyperdrive and blasters. Yeah. Like, they're kind of, like, using these swords to channel their soul and <laughs> use that to slice each other. Um so it's a typical show um, first uh, chapter, but it's good. Mm-hmm. It's about a kid who I guess is on life support, but he wants to become a samurai, and his father's trying to get him. It's a whole thing. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, in, in the end, he become he gets a chance to become a samurai, and he does, and he you know takes out the first chapter bad guys. These things don't really happen, and I guess it's gonna be his story. Um, I guess him becoming a great samurai. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I would check it out if you like um, uh, Naruto because it's similar in style so far. But uh, he's a lot less annoying than Naruto was originally off right off the bat. Naruto was a very, like, kind of troublemaker asshole. <laughs> yeah. This kid's, like, he's kind of an ass, but, like, only because he's angry that he can't really leave his house because he's, like, kept alive mm. by this machine. And his father's trying to build this portable version of the machine so mm-hmm. his son can go out. But the problem is that, like, he has to deal with, like, bad, he's dealing with a bad guy to get the parts, like, so it's mm. <laughs> which goes uh, nothing. Bad, nothing good will come of that. I, I guarantee. Yeah. Well, he might be the bad guy's dead now, so it's all, or at least he's capacitated. I don't know. So I check it out. It's free right now on the Shonen Jump uh, website and their app. So it's free. Why not? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting for? I don't know. I can't really afford free. That would require a couple of like clicks on the mouse yeah. to yeah. to get that. Well. Sorry, I can't help you there. I didn't know you linked it. I'm not gonna <laughs> click the damn mouse. Okay, that's really it for me. All right, then I guess um, we'll run a break, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Kane from Modern Science, and you're listening to Otaku Generation dot net podcast. And we are back from break with this week's topic, which is My Hero Academia: The Movie, Two Heroes. Okay, so what do we need to know, and where shall we start? Okay, this is a 2018 movie, runs 97 minutes long, and it is, very obviously, a movie of a standalone adventure with students from My Hero Academia, the famous superhero training academy show. Mm-hmm. And that's it. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> no, uh, so I want to start, I mean, you guys will know better than I I thought this movie, no, Grant, I knew a lot about My Hero Academia now, so... Mm-hmm. I don't know for sure, but I thought this movie was kind of approachable to have a fun time with, even if you weren't super into the characters. Sure, yeah. No, I totally would agree with that, yeah. Yeah. Um, Unlike some of the other movies we've watched where it's like a shonen movie based on a shonen jump, and like it's like, woo, everything's over everybody's head unless you've seen like a million chapters. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are a lot of characters from um, My Hero Academia who show up, mm-hmm. but not all of them are central to the plot. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them show up, and it they're just kind of there to like give the vibe that like yes everybody is here and to you know provide like occasional like you know bits of character development or comedic relief or something um but it it really focuses on just a couple of main characters and then like the rest of the team is there to make it a team effort to defeat the bad guys as the movie goes on because one of the nice things about this is that they include everybody and they give them something important mm-hmm. to do. Um, like there's one point where the main characters need to um, get through a bunch of obstacles and the team basically shows up for everyone to like contribute exactly what is needed to overcome a specific mm-hmm. obstacle, even if 
it doesn't get everybody along. There's there's a lot of, of people like defeating an obstacle and saying, okay, go on without me. Yeah, there's and, a lot of that. <laughs> go on and out. Yeah. And, <laughs> I'll hold them off. <laughs> and and the thing is, that's that's the way it, it really ought to be because you're not going to like take get everybody to the end of of all of your of your you know villains or whatever it's uh, it's a case where the best people solve the problem that they're best at solving and that's uh that's a good dynamic that's that's a good way of developing your plot yeah so the plot definitely so the, the whole premise of the movie is that uh there's this like technology expo going on correct and mm -hmm. we're like you know high-tech heroes assisting technology to be shown off and Villains hijack the tower where it's happening and hijack the like you know capture all the including all might all the pro heroes. Yes. So it's up for the, the young heroes who are kind of late to the party, <laughs> who weren't captured. We're go. literally late yeah. to the party. Like they were they were like we're representing our school. We should go as a group. And then of course everybody takes forever. Some Take people get lost. <laughs> and and when and the villains of course start on time. So. <laughs> They're like, all the pro heroes are here, begin the plot. Yeah, because they underestimate the students, like they're not pro heroes, but they are very strong. Um, and yeah. so the movie really is them cl literally climbing a tower of, le a tower of levels <laughs> to get to the top. So it's very much like, hey, at, at level 50, you hold off these guys. <laughs> like it's, I think it works, but it's not, it's not super imaginative in the way they could do it. But I thought the way they made each hero, each hero have used their abilities to the you know, the most useful way they could, I thought was well done. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it just kind of reminds me of, of Ghostbusters, which was basically a comedy. And they they have to, like, climb to the top of this apartment building to fight Zool. And <laughs> they, I think at one point, Bill Murray says, okay, when we get to the 30th floor, just let me know, because I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, they don't. Yeah, because they have to go upstairs because the whole thing, the whole place gets placed on lockdown by the villains, and so yeah, it's like, oh, it's a security system designed to protect against supervillains. Right. It works really well against regular heroes too. Surprise, <laughs> yeah. surprise. Um, so the the main superhero in this is of course All Might, and he shows up on I Island and has a uh, reunion with his his friend Dave Shield the the quirkless scientist who is developing all of these great things to help superheroes um be better heroes <laughs> be better heroes to enhance their quirks um all of this sort of stuff and then in opposition to this you've got all might's student who is a quirkless person which is in this world, only about twenty percent of the people have yeah. no superhero quirks, yeah. which which is kind of an interesting um, turnaround. And uh, he's he's all sad and dejected when he was a child because I have no quirk, but I can't be, be a superhero. Yeah. And then he meets up with All Might, who is able to bestow yeah. um, his transferable quirk, and I'm like, one oh. for all, <laughs> it's called, yeah, yeah. And I thought that was a really cool dynamic mm -hmm. because. Uh, even if you don't have a quirk, you're still perfectly capable of receiving a transferable quirk. Yeah, and um, it's good they put that in there because that's a flashback they show in the movie for, mm -hmm. I guess, the purposes of people who have not seen or not watched a lot of My Hero because that yeah. all happens in the series, but it's good they put that in there because I mm -hmm. think it catches everyone up pretty quickly to what's going on. Is this the uh, the first movie from this franchise? Yeah. Okay. I, I believe so. it is, yeah. yes. And, and I think that's something that we need to say about this movie is that Although you will under you will um, understand it and appreciate it more if you have been watching My Hero Academia, even if you haven't, I haven't been watching My Hero Academia all that much, and I was brought up to speed very competently without a whole lot of obviously mm -hmm. shoveled in exposition um, to to appreciate this movie very well. Um, they they introduced the characters well, they introduced the world well. And they, they focused enough on flashbacks of the significant characters so you understand their past history up to this point and how it affects their motivations, uh, how it ties into the villain's plot, um, you know, who's been hiding secrets from whom. Yeah. You know, this, this is one of those movies where, you know, if, no, if like about three different people had not been hiding secrets from each other all this time, all the bad stuff could have been avoided. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so. you get a chance to see some of. Yeah, you know, they don't show All Might in his like you know 
prime very much in the actual manga or the show. So it's cool to see him as like as a young All Might, like you mm. know, just getting you know, you know, still the symbol of peace, but like he's younger. You can actually see his eyes; they're actually blue. You don't really see them ever in the current. <laughs> the current is just like black, just blackness in his eyes, very scary. <laughs> Uh, and the, his relationship with uh, Professor David Shield, who I thought for a movie character was actually quite uh, a good character. Mm-hmm. Um, same with his daughter, who became like sort of the secondary. Yeah, was was she previously introduced in My Hero I don't think Academia? So, no. I don't think you've seen her. Okay, I'm almost positive of that. Yeah. Well, if uh, if she was just being introduced in this movie, I thought they did a good job yeah. of of introducing her, and like uh, her father, she is quirkless, mm-hmm. but she also wants to help the superhero fight by becoming a great researcher like her father. And she actually does. She helps out... Uh, yeah, she gives, she gives Deku that uh, Yeah, she gives that gauntlet, Deku you know. a, like a, a forearm gauntlet yeah. that allows him to use more of his his yeah. quirk power without... Breaking his arm. Yeah, injuring <laughs> in himself. The, early, the beginning of the series, when he wants to like throw a punch with the quirk power he got, he like just destroys his arm. But it does, uh, it does a hell of a thing. But like, he has to go be healed by the nurse who has yeah. healing power. But <laughs> it's like a nasty. Way. And this, sometimes he just does a flick. If he has to do less power, but it still like breaks his finger. Uh, and we've gotten past that in the <laughs> yeah. In the manga, he's got much better, and uh, he's developed new fighting styles that are you know more uh, better for his body. Let's say. Uh, yeah, but that's that's another interesting dynamic to this universe is that. You could have a quirk that is more powerful than you can actually like fully yeah. express, mm-hmm. uh, and that's just like. Hmm. And I will say the idea of uh, equipment aiding heroes and mm-hmm. villains um, in their using their powers is, is the thing they definitely go into a lot in the actual series as well. So it's cool that they you know focused a lot on that. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's sort of like melding the whole natural talent versus the Batman track of superheroism, yeah. where it's like, okay, you've got. A super quirk, but wouldn't it be much better if you had like this visor that allows you to see better, thirty-seven yeah, yeah. different kinds of things, <laughs> yes. or enhanced communications, or maybe armor would be good to go with that other quirk you've got. Yeah. And and I think that's a, a a very you know intelligent way of of dealing with a super powered hero universe. It's like you don't want everybody to be the Incredible Hulk, where you just basically charge into battle naked with nothing but rage and muscles. Yeah. So I I will say, I thought the the movie lacked a a good villain, per se. And there is a twist Mm. in the end about who the real bad guy really is, but maybe not. I'm not going to go into that because I don't want to ruin that. But the main, who ends up being like the villain? It's Detective Pikachu. (laughs) (laughs) The guy who ends up being his villain is a guy with an iron mask who has red hair, and I guess he has magnetizing powers. And that's sort of like, there's Mm -hmm. not really anything about him that is (laughs) interesting. You know, he's just like I'm bad guy. There, that's my thing. I'm and just evil. Like, Why are you bad, bad guy? Because I'm bad. <laughs> I'm here to be bad because bad is good. It's weird. He looks a lot like a character from One Piece who also has magnetizing powers. I wonder mm. if that was like a, a nod to that or not. This character named like Captain Kid, who is a mm. ma- he has red hair. He doesn't wear a mask, but like he kind of looks like him. It was it was a little interesting. I don't know if that was intentional mm. or if that was just a. I don't know. Maybe it's it's all derived from Magneto in the X Men comics, where he's like master of magnetism. Oh, no, and I know the main supervillain. I just meant like from the instance of like the way they look. Like here, are these two red haired villains that happen to mm-hmm. uh, you know have the same power. Okay. But anyway, I I don't know. I was speculating. Uh, But yeah, I think it's a very um, well animated movie as well. Especially that final fight where they have like Deku and All Might like running around. Like, yeah, it it looks awesome. (laughs) Yeah. um, Definitely a a well put together movie on on basically all counts. Um, The voice acting sounded good. The character designs were were nice. It looks like the uh, animation got a bump up from the TV series. Yeah, definitely. Which is what you want from a movie like this. Kind of why you come to a movie like this to see your favorite characters looking even better on the big screen. Yeah, (laughs) bigger than life and better rendered. Mm -hmm. Um, What did you think of the music? Good music? I liked it. Uh, The final battle music, they they played a couple tracks at the end I really liked as well. Mm -hmm. Um, This is good, like, really good for the action um the excellent, ending, the ending theme with the ending credits i didn't really listen to it's it was fine it's a j-rock song <laughs> yeah there wasn't really much in the ending credits it was sort of like scenes from the movie that you just saw which i don't know put something else there i don't know what but <laughs> like i don't know maybe like little epilogue scenes of like this is them coming down from the broken tower like hey Deku. Yeah. you know they're running still like still images of all that nonsense uh, but we didn't even get that which is kind of a bummer oh well yeah that's fine <laughs> uh but yeah you know, there are a lot of characters. If you're a fan of the villains from the series, none of them appear here. Um, except for a brief one, which is sort of like a backstory thing for the main villain. But mm-hmm. other than that, you're not going to see, like, the League of Villains, which is kind of... 
I know a lot of people like them. I do too. Uh, <laughs> but you're not going to see them very much in this movie. It's really just sort of the main characters you expect from the main class. And then there's a couple of people, like, I don't know. I, I don't really like the guy with the sticky balls that, like, He's mm-hmm. like a little guy's kind of a pervert. He's this little creepy guy with the thing. Well, he didn't do a whole lot of perverted stuff in this movie. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, you're right. He, you know, he's just. Yeah, you're right. He wasn't that bad as he sometimes can be. I don't. Yeah. I just don't like that character. I don't get the point of him. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I guess that's part of the fun because he does develop his powers in the show kind of interestingly. Yeah, I think they were they were making an effort to uh, <laughs> to keep this like a a, a fairly innocuous movie because uh, one one thing I realized about like you know halfway through the movie is that um melissa is wearing a dress with a fairly short skirt and there are no panty shots yeah that's true um like and she's like you know running around and and, being knocked knocked over over, being knocked over (laughs) climbing up ladders and jumping through the air and whatever and it's like and it's like the magic skirt never never flips up to reveal her her underwear that's true with the series as well, which I appreciate. Mm-hmm. Unless there was, there's probably maybe there is an instance somewhere, but it never jumped out to me. Yeah, all the time which, read which it. to be fair is like a kind of cheap sort of fan service. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm all for, eh. I'm all for a little, uh, you know, fan service based comedy. But <laughs> I don't yeah. think this movie needed it, <laughs> so they didn't have it, which is nice. Yeah, because I, I feel like there's a lot of anime where they just um, are like, okay, this happens, this happens, this happens, and then like you know, you must have a like slather a layer of panty shot and and like you know cheap fan service on it for no reason yeah i want fan service that's organic to the plot damn it <laughs> exactly there probably is an anime that is that but maybe so this was... must this nakedness must be derived from character development <laughs> well yeah, i'm sure we can think of some examples of that actually <laughs> which would be that actually would work yeah there are examples of that and even if it's a flimsy excuse for character development or plot relevance, I'm in favor of that. <laughs> um, let's see. Checking out Wikipedia, I noticed an interesting thing, which is that uh, this movie was premiered at Anime Expo. Yeah, I didn't go to Anime Expo, so I didn't see it. But Yeah, but like, you know, yay, hooray for everybody who went to Anime Expo and got to see this movie. Oh, the film's movie. world premiere. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. That's, that is cool. Okay, I thought it was the North American Yeah, it was, it was like, you know, a pre-release special showing for Anime Expo, and then it came out like the following month. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So, That's yay. Really cool. That's cool. I wish, yeah, I wish I did that more. That's a cool idea to make a worldwide premiere at a, our conventions, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I say Otakon. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. Um, nothing about the uh, well, like I said this, this is not it's pretty standalone there's not anything to, like most movies uh, based off shonen series it's not um, going to have major plot impact on the main show because it's yeah, not the way yeah. these things work although it is set between seasons 2 and 3 so when, we, when you finish up season 2 that's the best time to watch this or mm-hmm. if you're looking for a fun movie I think this is still worth watching you know it's just you're, if your friend's a big My Hero Academia guy or girl and you want to watch it with them, you will have probably still have a good time if he's trying to make you watch it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I think if you're curious about My Hero Academia and you don't want to commit to a series yeah, yeah. without having some idea of how much you're going to like it, I'd say this is a good um, yeah, yeah, sure. introduction to the series. It's very approachable. In yeah. a way, I thought like the One Piece Strong World movie was. Uh, yeah, and it was... As opposed to the other mm. two movies we did later on. It's only, were, what, yeah. 97 minutes? Yeah, it's so short. It's not that bad. There's no more states welcome. It doesn't have a lot of filler. It just feels... It's snappy. Things are constantly mm-hmm. happening, which mm-hmm. is, you know, can't much more from a shonen movie, <laughs> really, honestly. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this this movie is, is, you know, nicely crafted, nicely put together. It, it does a lot of things right. So what else do we need to talk about? Um, uh, we should talk about availability. Yeah. Um, this is available on home video. It's mm-hmm. being released by Funimation. There is a dub available as well as the original subtitled version. Uh, the Funimation website lists the Blu-ray for $35. I pay less than that for I'm sure, on Amazon. Um, <laughs> but I checked on Amazon, and it looks like you can get it for like $20 bucks, um, right now. Yeah. And you can also rent it on all the services you expect. Hmm. It's available Prime, streaming. Video, okay. you know, I'm not sure where else, but you know, yeah, you can rent it <laughs> if you don't want to commit to buying it. But I, yeah, it comes with DVD Blu-ray combo. Yeah, um, the Funimation website lists it as retailing for 35 bucks, but it's available for 27 directly from them. 
35 is a lot for a movie, actually. Yeah, 35 yeah. is kind of a lot for a movie. 20, I think, is the right this one, spot. Um, on it. What was in your case was the Blu-ray Plus, I think, a DVD. Yeah, they do the combo. Yeah. So if you want to um, rip it and make some AMVs to it, you can do that, too. Yeah. You can still watch it in Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, there's also extras on the Blu-ray. We did not watch those for this no. show because it's it's not the movie. But, right. Uh, um, it has extras if you're if you're a person who yeah it's like an interview with the dub cast which is like eh, you know if you want yeah. there are definitely dub fans so I can see why you're interested in that I don't this is not me so I don't really I didn't care right <laughs> obviously I didn't tell anybody oglink.com seven two seven we'll give you links um, oglink.com slash three q six we'll take you over to the wiki three q seven we'll take you over to Funimation's website. Um, I think that's basically it. Um, you know, as the usual stuff. Um, yeah, I think so. Anything else? I don't mm-hmm. think there's anything else. No. Okay. Then, uh, we, we probably should, um, wrap up. Mm-hmm. So for all the things we've mentioned, uh, please visit the website, www.talkgeneration.net or ognetworks.tv or oglink.com slash og727 for a bunch of links uh, you want to leave us feedback you want to tell us how wrong we are uh, you certainly can do that over in the discord oglink.com slash discord um, you want to become a patreon and support us and get extra stuff and obviously get access to the uh, May after the show which we have yet to record but we have some ideas and um, you know coming up in uh, in May, uh, ogilink.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Um, what else? I don't know what else to say. Um, you can email us. You can leave us voicemail. You can leave us Skype messages. All those things in the show notes as usual. So we got a phone number. Hmm, what am I saying? We got a fortune. We got a phone number, people. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was saying. What I was thinking. Call it for our fortune. I was thinking of the phone numbers. We do have the phone numbers. Hot but number. My brain was I was watching Matt decide a fortune to, to to read. I don't know. Some of these fortunes are, are just like pretty pretty skimpy fortunes. I don't know, but but you know, Bryce last week was like, No, this is a terrible fortune. We're reading this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I was like, well, we'll just get another one. He's like, no, we're reading this. So no, we'll I'm, not, I'm, not gonna waste a, I'm not going to waste a bad fortune. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, anyway, this is, this week's fortune cookie to guide you through the upcoming week is everything is impossible until somebody does it. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. let's see the... The bad one? What was the, the bad, bad one? The bad fortune, what was it? The, uh, bad fortune. the bad fortune said, great, you're ready for a parchy. That is really terrible. Really? I don't know. That's, that's, that's really know. terrible. Well, I, well, it's encouraging, but it's it's not really what I would consider advice. If you're making <laughs> the, the party. If you're you're making it, you know, salacious and you're adding in bed or something like that, okay, that could be pretty good. But no, you can't save that one by itself. Okay, yes, that, that would be <laughs> highly amusing if you added with a Randy alpaca to the end of it, but, but as just like... A standalone fortune. Not real good. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, enjoy your week. See you next time. Bye-bye.